What's up guys, so I wanted to make a video on this, which is a random gaming team comp in the Aeos Cup. They just came with something completely unique into the tournament, and they kind of just blasted through the entire tournament without people having really an answer for this team comp, which is the semi-jungle, Sylveon jungle, which goes into clearing one elite pub, one blue buff, then goes towards top lane, is very strong with the hyper voice and just starts annoying the other top laner as much as he can. We also have Gatlu, who is normally the jungler for random gaming, going towards bot side with the blast toys who will then overtake the jungle so the sylveon only takes one buff for the early game to just speed run through level four and afterwards we have blast toys going back to jungle and we start taking buffs you know in the mid game to get his power spikes as well so very unique strategy that we have not really seen before i mean we have seen random gaming do like a double jungle thing where they both like take a buff with the sylveon but we have never seen something like this so gatlu just takes these sides while his two supports try to go for lasses as well so he's going to try to secure these ordinos before the enemies can even wreck to it and now we already have the Sylveon with Hyper Voice on top side, and they already get a kill. The Hoopa actually was preparing for it, so this like teams try to adjust to it, right? They try to send the Hoopa top lane as well, but that also meant that the bot lane of the other team was also starting to struggle, right? Since they were in a 2v3. And this Hyper Voice Sylveon was just being able to pressure the top side so hard, even 1v2, that uh, yeah, it, it just made the enemy top laner be very, very weak. You can see how aggressive he is right now. He might die here, he says focus bend. So he runs focus bend, choice picks, and vice classes. He does get finally taken down. And that's not the only thing they did. They also went very hard on the Zepdos flips. I know Zepdos flips are not the most entertaining thing, but their strategy was very well. They played super well around it. They, they played even the Lucario build. Lucario build is currently running close combat with power punch, and he actually plays energy amplifier. So their go the entire goal was just to burst on Zepdos with energy amplifier, Blissey flying onto Lucario. We also have Blastoise with energy amplifier. Being the Zapdos pitch is all pressing weapon at the same time and just trying to get the last hit over the enemy team. And they just got away with it so often, right? They just played it so perfectly. And the Sylveon as well. The Sylveon doesn't just have to be jungle, right? Like, Sylveon just getting level 4 fast, then can get level 8 very fast, which means that Sylveon will have the Unite, Unite move very, very soon. We see Gatlu now finally taking over the jungle with the Blast Toys, which took a while. But yeah, he's finally starting to get it. He just needs level 7 pretty much. I think, like, in this game, both teams will not care about being level 9 on Dread. Um, random gaming just has power punch. They will just go to Kario bot side, they will start doing the dread very fast, and they will have the best CQ with power punch in this game. So Klaus on the other side of Unleashed Lucario only has extreme speed, so we will not be able to contest these last hits that Redmore can offer. And uh, so very different. They changed a lot of things. Energy M's on North characters, the Sylveon, semi jungle. Then we also have the Blast Toys going somewhere else then back into jungle so a lot of very fancy rotations a lot of very fancy you know xp sharing pretty much and uh yeah it was very entertaining to watch and uh, the team comp actually also won in north america so they copied the strat and they went over to north america a north american team full send copied this team comp with one hour practice and they managed to actually upset a lot of teams in this tournament with this team comp and just that shows that the scene comp has good potential, right? Of course, it's going to be certain the time where it probably gets figured out how to play against this. But it's a very entertaining about Unite. Like, you can just bring a team comp to a tournament that no one expects you to play. And then people have, like, one day to maybe look for an answer for this team comp if it works very well. And here you can see Redmore's going to charge up his power punch. There we go. Just easy last hit on the dreaded power punch. Unleashed absolutely had no chance of even close of getting this. Unless they maybe had a level 9 blast toys, but... He couldn't quite be level 9 as well, so yeah, just very well done by them. They have so much damage as well with the Hyper Voice Sylveon being able to burn down objectives super, super fast. It's just has such good early game. And why do they do late game flips? I mean, they pretty much can't. That's the problem of the team comp, right? It's very bad at team fighting. It can't team fight. You have Blastoys as your own damage dealer, kind of. Sylveon drops off pretty hard into late game. Like, late game team fights with Sylveon is very difficult. You don't really have, like, a main damage dealer. So it does prop off in late game team fights as well. Power Punch Lucario also does fall off a bit. But it's just as very good as last hitting and securing. And they pretty much played this team comp the entire tournament. And uh, they did have some struggles early on. But the longer they played it, the better they got at it. And uh, at some point, they just... yeah, I felt like they mastered this team comp a lot. And uh, teams just had no answer for it. Because if you even fall just a bit behind, it's very hard. Like, the Hooper always allows your team to get to Zapdos, right? Hooper can just walk in, drop a portal there. And especially if you're ahead. I mean, the enemy team has to zone you out. The enemy team kind of has to engage on your team comp. Um, to even have a chance of dealing with the Zapdos flip that's, you know, about to happen. 
Um, you kind of have to instantly force a fight. But if the team that does this, like Random Gaming, has actually had an experience as well, what do you do? You, you, I mean, your company is not someone that's high on experience, right? You're just going to get killed. And so in the end, if they get a level lead, which they do a lot because they win almost every Dreadnought fight, they can still win late game team fights as well, still. And if they fall behind, they can still try brute force them way in with the Hooper Portis. So they always have very good win conditions with this team comp. And yeah. I just thought it was amazing to see, especially like a Sylveon. People always think this character is very, very bad. Um, of course, it's a unique strategy. This doesn't mean like Sylveon is like overpowered character or anything. Um, <clears throat> but in this strategy, it doesn't really work in solo queue as well, right? It worked out wonders. And I think this threat is something we might see as well. If Espeon ever gets a buff with and deals more damage, we might start seeing double EV jungle. I have already made a video on it. I think that's something we could totally be seeing. Um, one, both EVs taking one buffs. And again, there's going to go for this Dread now. There's the Energy Amp onto the Zept, onto the Dread. But I think this time they actually didn't get it. No, this time they actually kind of mistimed it and got a bit unlucky. But it can still happen as well, right? They don't really time it. They just use... When Dread draw drops to 50%, you just saw them all just use their Unite moves on it and they hope they get it. Didn't get away this time with it. But they still have a very good XP lead in general. So they're not too worried. They know they have the better Zeptos flip. And some teams try to adjust to this as well by also playing Power Punch, Lucarios in certain ways, but yeah, it didn't, it took them a while to understand why Random Gaming Steam Comp just worked so well. And yeah. But as you can see in these fights, they're kind of weak. So it was like the best way to win against the Steam Comp was just forcing fights the entire time, right? Right now they kind of just wiped them by forcing a fight. And uh, that was probably the best way of dealing with it because random gaming is kind of a bit underleveled when it comes to like farming experience and stuff. And again, they don't have the best damage either. Power Punch Lucario doesn't do as much as Extreme Speed Lucario. And again, a Savion does drop off as well. The Blast Toys wasn't too high level too from the side of random gaming. So there's for sure chances to win against this, but it's also difficult as well. So something very unique and uh, very cool when like teams bring something new to the table. Running Gaming also used to be a team that used to play the score comp, so trying to find some new ways of playing the game. And Random Gaming is always very unique. They always have different strats. They're one of the first teams who, again, did the double jungle as well with the Sylveon. They normally just bring like Sylveon, Charizard, and they just share buffs so that both get power spikes very fast. So they always try to come up with things. They're one of the best Greedent teams as well and played it pretty early on with the Greedent. Gutlu is very known for his Greedent. Got them bent as well. They also made Talon Flame kind of popular. They played so much, so much Talon Flame in Europe when he was absolutely strong. So they're kind of like trendsetters. And uh, I think that's very cool to have a team that comes up with new strats all the time and tries to play the game in different ways to, you know, get new metas in. So props to Random Gaming for always coming up with new stuff. It's very fun to watch. And so, you know, just like the same team comes over and over again. Of course, we still have like the Lucario, Blissey, Hooper, but they played a different way, right? It's still different builds. Again, we see the close combat power punch Lucario, so nothing we are used to seeing anymore. That kind of fell off. And there we go, another power punch, easy last on the dread. It still does absolutely insane damage on the execute and on objectives, so it's pretty easy to get Dreadnoughts. And right now, Unleash kind of has to, like, they have to start fighting, because Random Gaming can just brute force them way into Zapdos. You can already see the Hooper walking towards the middle here. And he's just ready to drop a portal and port his entire teammates in. Or just force a fight instantly and force a Zapdos fight. Like, Random Gaming doesn't really just want to team fight, right? Blissey is a bit caught here, but just a safeguard, X speed. And uh, it will, like, just explode in absolutely a second. But actually, this time, Unleash was going for it. So Unleash tried to be like, okay, you guys do this? No, we do it first. But there we go. That was a super bad time. Blissey Unite onto Lucario. Lucario with his Energy Amp Unite as well. Just doing so much damage on the spot. Also with the Blasters Unite. And they're able to just get the Zapdos last hit. And that, like at this point, it's how you're in a 50-50, right? If you like all time your moves perfectly at the same time, it's not a 50-50, right? And if you guys enjoyed this video, I hope you did. I would appreciate if you like and subscribe to my channel. And if you want to watch the rest of this grand final, I will link it in the comments. Of course, I already spoiled like who's going to win this. But uh, if you still want to see some Pokemon Unite and see how the Steam Comp works, you can check out the link in the description and watch the entire grand final. All right, guys, thanks for watching.